What is a function? This question is surprisingly hard to answer because there are many answers. So I'll give you some examples. Here is a pure mathematical function in Python. It takes input, processes the input, and returns the result. The property of mathematical functions is that each time the function is called with the same arguments, the result will be the same. Now look at this code. This function does not take any parameters. It creates a random x and y value and returns them as a tuple. We say that this function has side effects. A side effect is an interaction with something outside of the function. In this case, the random module. This function returns a different result each time when it is called. Here is another example of a function with side effects. This harmlessly looking function does not return a value, instead it prints something. But have you ever thought where it prints to? Well, to the terminal you might say. But how can it do that? To print something, the print function must have some connection to the terminal. By sending text to the terminal, there is an interaction with the system outside of the say hello function. And that is a side effect too. Let me give you one more example of a function that has side effects. Look at this code. There is a numbers list outside of the function. And the function appends to this list. This is valid code and the function will add the number to the list. And these are the kind of side effects that are important to explain the difference between functions and methods. But first, let me repeat. Functions can be roughly divided into two categories. Functions without side effects are mathematical functions that take input and return output without interacting with something outside of the function. Functions with side effects are functions that may or may not use input or output. They can use or change the state outside of the function. You might want to pause the video for a moment and read that again because side effects play a huge role in the difference between functions and methods. So what is a method? Let me show you one. Look at this employee class. Right now it has no attributes, but objects of type employee can already be instantiated. The only problem is that all objects will be the same. Usually you would write a class initializer that takes employee data. But I will purposely not do this here, because the class initializer is a special method that requires extra explanation. So what I will do is create a function in the class that sets a first name and last name. And here it is. Now, two things are worth mentioning. First of all, this looks a lot like a function. And it is. But a function that is a member of the class is called a method. And this has some implications in Python, and you probably have asked yourself this question many times. What is self? To explain self, let me create three instances of the class. At this point, there are three employee objects. Each object has a first name and last name attribute. These attributes were created by the setName method. But what about the setName method itself? Where is it stored? In each object? Does each object has its own set name method? The answer is no. Each object has a reference to the set name function. And now it gets interesting. When you search online for the definition of methods, you sometimes read something like a method operates on the data of the instance. But even if this is functionally true, this is not what happens under the hood in Python. And if methods would operate on the data of the instance, why does the programmer manually need to type self as the first parameter? I mean, shouldn't the method automatically have access to the instance data? Well, as I said before, the answer is because the method is just a function that lives outside of the object. 
And when the employee object for Vera wants to set a first name and last name, it calls the set name and passes itself as the first argument so the function can use the employee object Vera to operate on. The object for Chuck calls set name and also passes itself as the first argument to work with. And the same goes for the Dave employee object. The same setName function is used to set the first name and last name for all employee objects. One question you might have is why the setName function expects self as its first parameter? But when you call the setName function, self does not have to be passed as an argument. The answer is that Python does this automatically. I explain how this works in another video and recommend watching it after this video. For now, it is enough to know that Python takes the instance variable and inserts it as first argument when calling the setName function. And now you know everything you need to know to understand the difference between functions and methods in Python. Here is a small recap. Functions can live anywhere in the code, are roughly divided into two categories, pure mathematical functions with inputs and outputs, or functions that have side effects. Methods are functions that are defined in a class, take an object instance as its first parameter, and their usual purpose is to interact with object data. I hope this video helped you to... Oh wait, I forgot to answer a very important question regarding self. One of the most asked questions during my training is, does the parameter have to be named self? The answer is no. Try it out yourself, rename self to anything you like. Python will not mind, and me neither, but I doubt if your team members will like it. The name self is a Python convention and I recommend using this name in your classes. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. If you'd like to support me, check out my Python courses on Udemy. Links are in the description.